do you have a model a kind of uh a structure of what you would expect in terms of sufficient evidence in order to be convinced that god exists because as far as i'm concerned and i want your view on this it seems that would it not be rational for each theist and each atheist to be very clear on what they would uh what, what would convince them essentially like because i think that that sounds reasonable because if they if they didn't by implication then they wouldn't know the evidence if it hit them in the face right so do you think that every every atheist and theist needs to have that kind of model? And and what about you? Do you do you have that? So so I actually think that's probably not right. So okay. the way I think about it is that what what you do is you've you've kind of got an ongoing theory which you keep um, testing out as new evidence comes in, and you've got no reason to revise or to have expectations that you're going to revise your theory independently of acquiring new evidence. So um, in lots of cases, you won't be able to say anything very interesting about what it would take in order for you to um, kind of be required to revise. So um, what would it take for me to revise my view about what I had for breakfast? All right. Um, I mean, there's various things that could happen. Um, but it's not like there's just nothing kind of on the radar that that's going that that sort of makes sense even to me about how I could be mistaken about what I ate an hour and a half ago. Right? Yeah, I, I mean, I could uh, yeah. see there's various things that could happen. Like I could have a an aneurysm, or you know, um, maybe I just ingest some drugs, right, or you know, there's, there's various possibilities, but it's not it's not clear. You know what what sort of evidence? Because so, those weren't really evidence; they were kind of thinking about changes in me, right? If you're thinking about evidence, it's not clear what I could what I could point to, right? What it, what it would take, but I don't need to be able to answer that question in order to just be confident that I'm correctly remembering what I had for breakfast. Right. Yeah, because because I'm because I'm thinking the the maybe you can outline this a bit more, but I'm thinking the breakfast example or analogy uh, might not be suitable to to the question of you know revising the arguments for God's existence mm. because it seems to me that the arguments for you know what you wait for breakfast and and the probability and things like that um, it, it seems on a, you know on a basic level the the principles are there and and the you know um, you know, but but to me, it seems a bit like it's it's kind of a different category. One, the, the God category seems to me more complex and more worthy of attention, if you if you know what I mean. So I don't think the principles are different, though. I mean, I think that you're doing kind of um, inference to the best explanation all over the place, right? And so what would have to happen is that you're just so so think about somebody who's weighed lots of considerations for and against and, come, and um, so that they're familiar with all the kinds of, with many of the kinds of things that theists will say about why they believe, familiar with many of the kinds of things that atheists will say about why they don't. They've done their own weighing of all this stuff and they've come down very firmly on the atheist side, right? Um, in a certain sense, you know what it would take for you to change your mind, right? You would have to weigh things differently. Um, and you're weighing those things differently. It might be a matter of acquiring some more information, or it might just be that you come to think that you you haven't been weighing it properly. So you, so you weigh it a different way, right? Um, but that that's not to say that you're thinking, oh, there's, you know, were I to have this experience, or were I to be told by somebody that I really trusted this bit of information or where I to just change my mind about that thing, that would be the thing that would make me swap, right? You don't have to think anything like that. So this is, you know, think about the Hume's example of the voice from the sky. Hume's thinking, you know, what would it take? What if there was a kind of voice that spoke from the sky to everybody in their own language so they could all understand it, saying, you know, I'm God and, you know, you, right. Um, I've got no idea 
what would happen, right? What I would think if I had that experience, I think I would suspect that I was hallucinating, right? That would be the, you know, the first thing I'd want to do is kind of check with other people. You know, are you hearing that? Mm. Uh, yeah. Um, um, but suppose that everybody did. Well, I don't know. Maybe, but something like that simply isn't in the cards, at least not according to me, right? And yeah. and kind of speculating about that seems about as useful as speculating about things that would make me change my mind about what I had for breakfast, right? That's the, I mean, that's the kind of point of the analogy, right? Yeah. I don't, I don't need to think about that question. It will take care of itself if the opportunity <laughs> happens along, right? Right. See, it's, just so, not, it's, just, it's, yeah. it's just not that interesting. Right. So, you know, pick a whole lot of things that somebody's pretty convinced of. Um, probably they're not going to have just ready to hand an answer to this question with respect to whatever it is. Right. So why think that you would have to have it ready to hand in the case of being a theist or an atheist? What would it take to make you stop being a theist? Mm. Right. Yeah, because I've you know I, I've seen various uh, you know atheists talk about the topic like Matt Delahunty. He's he's on the same lines of he doesn't know what it would take and uh, and and when you were on Unbelievable, um, Justin Briley asked you what you know th this kind of question, yeah. and he and he uh, and he talked about uh, another atheist. I'm, I'm forgetting his name now. Um, but it was quite funny actually when when that other atheist was on unbelievable is is quite a clip um he as, as justin uh, admits you, you two are very different in your styles of atheism <laughs> um so w when i think of this personally i i mean i i'm at the position where i don't know i'm i'm the same as you but i get this instinct that would it not be arbitrary to even have these kind of discussions and have the kind of uh, you know, debates and, and arguments, if at the end of the day, we didn't actually know what would even convince us. So to me, that seems strange, you know, e even though I don't even know what would convince me, it seems strange yeah. that I wouldn't have this set kind of, you know, uh, format. Yeah. So, so I guess, though, um, so here's one way, of maybe of thinking about it. So, the other recent book I've got is a debate book with Kenny Pierce, um, Is There a God? And in it, my kind of rhetorical strategy in the first bit where I get to do my thing is just to say, look, here's more or less an outline of my intellectual framework, my beliefs. And look, there's no God-sized hole anywhere, right? So I've got no reason to believe in God, right? It's, it just doesn't fit with my theory, right? What would it take? For me to change my mind, well, I'd have to find a God-sized hole somewhere, right? That's specific enough, right? I don't mm -hmm. have to have a view about where one might actually appear, right? So it's not like I've got nothing to say. It's not like I can't see um, th that I've got absolutely nothing in response to the question, but I've got nothing of detail. And that seems right. It's a bit like um, if you ask a theist, so, okay, what's it going to take? What's what's going to... They, they might not be able to say, well, you know, there's just this particular thread, and if you pull on that one, the whole thing's going to fall apart. It's not like Well, that. well for Christianity, right. if, if Jesus uh, is demonstrated not to be, uh, you know, to, to not exist or, you know, like... Um, uh, Richard Carey would say, or if he didn't resurrect, then that that's actually what you could pull out, and that that would destroy the entire thing. So I, I don't know. In, in Christianity, so, I, I think that so might be true. That that would be difficult, though. It's like it, I mean, time machines are not in the offing, right? It's going to be fairly difficult to prove, right, that that yeah. Jesus didn't exist, yeah. um, and you know, there's. There's reasons. I mean, think about somebody like Bart Ehrman, right, and his views. Uh, there's there, there's reasons why lots of non-believers are still going to think there's there's something that stands at the origin of Christianity, um, even if we're really not very sure about 
what's true about it and what's false about it. Um, and the question really is that the I think think for Christians, they would have to stop believing that Jesus is God, roughly. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that that would have to, and that's not going to be delivered by historians, I don't think. Uh, You're not going to be able to read that off the historical record. And independently, naturalists have lots of reasons for thinking that it isn't true. 